I'm gonna give it to you right now. I'm gonna pay five. Okay. To digivolve my Wing Dramon into Imperial Dramon Fighter Mode. <laughs> Draw one for Digivolution. Lilymon, go. Bye bye. Okay. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Sealed Only 1v1. And uh, I gotta be honest, I'm feeling pretty good going into this week. We are two games up in two games total, so uh, not bad. Uh, but of course, uh, as we go for win number three over here, we are confronted with a bit of a challenge. And that specifically is that with Pete having lost uh, two consecutive games in a row, he's basically able to activate a comeback mechanic and limit some of my card choices. Uh, so this week, because he's on two losses, he can now force me to play one less of any card in my deck. And unfortunately, he picked my boss monster. Uh, so I will only be able to play three copies of All Force Vidramon, which is, uh, trust me, a gigantic blow to the consistency of the deck in doing my test hands. I am just not seeing this early enough uh, in order to go for the big, you know, eight cards in hand security, attack plus one double swing. Uh, it is just not happening. So I'm hoping that I can pull some kind of backup. I can pull maybe the OG all force uh, and just have some sort of alternative win condition uh, because this guy is just being way, way too shy. And uh, honestly, if I go into the late game, it's Pete's game to win. So we'll see. Uh, I have access to the Jessmon starter deck this week, which will give me a copy of Davis. Davis can hopefully dig out All Force Vidramon a little bit easier, uh, and hopefully something comes out of uh, the few packs that we have access to this week, because um, otherwise, uh, that win streak is not going to last. But hey, without further ado, let's actually crack open what we've got and see uh, if we can pull some kind of a miracle. Okay, everyone, we've got a bit of a different pack opening this week. Uh, I've actually got just four packs of 1.5. Honestly, getting a little tired of the set, but hey, you know, I had four uh, exactly of the All Force pack art, so I thought, you know what? Let's pay tribute to the fourth fallen All Force uh, and maybe replace him with the OG over here. We also have a little bit of spice in the Jessmon starter deck, which is newly released in Canada. Um, obviously, we are not going to suddenly start playing Jessmon, although it was tempting since I did buy two of them. Uh, but I think we'll just open up this one this week because, of course, it comes with six bonus Tamer cards, which will hopefully uh, alleviate our woes. Our woes, of course, being getting memory choked perpetually to one <laughs> by Pete and his army of Izzy's. And then since your boy did win last week, I have access to three bonus packs and New Awakening seemed like the sensible choice. We're of course playing a Vmon based deck, so, you know, between Armor Rush and the support for the Imperial line in here, I figure there are plenty of goodies uh, to start digging into. And, you know, really, we gotta start getting away from the older sets a little bit because they've been severely power crept, obviously with Pete digging into BT7 especially and getting access to hybrids. Uh, this stuff is just not going to cut it anymore. It is literally a different era of the game. So we're going to start leaning on this stuff moving forward a little bit. But again, you know, hopefully we can just pull some really solid staples out of what we've still got in here. Uh, and then, you know, we'll see uh, between this and the other starter deck, we should be able to basically flesh out our tamer lineup and be set really for the rest of the series. So anyway, I am going to just get some of this stuff out of the way. We'll dive into 1.5 first, uh, and fingers crossed, we pull something excellent. Let's start with this bad boy here. Opened up right away. Now if I can just not mangle it, we'll be in good shape. All right. Mummymon, Gargomon, Holy Wave, Argomon, Shamamon, Positron Laser. Hey, we got a Vmon. There we go. Kakinmon, Argomon, another ray of victory, Dark Despair, Jamming Vmon. Oh, yes. Okay, perfect. That's a great hit. That's going to be really useful just going forward in general. But if we can get access to some armors, uh, then this boy is definitely going to be the MVP. All right, I'm liking this. Let's see if we can keep the tempo up. All right, let's see. We've got something shiny at the back. Okay, we got Sukumon. Super Eagermon, Rapidmon, Necrophobia, Duramon, Antillamon, my boy Armadillomon, Argomon, Lopmon, Code Cracking, Shakumon, and Omnimon Alter S is our secret rare. We wanted a level 7, but that's not the one I wanted. 
Oh no, maybe we will just have to play Jessmon after all uh, and surprise Pete for a week. All right. Oh, that means uh, no virus Imperial Dramon, unfortunately, but you know, what can you do? All right. Get out of there. Let's see what we got. Got Penguinmon, Dokugamon, Seedramon, Lightning Paw, Commandramon, Arukenimon, Argomon, Birdramon, Eden's Javelin, Vidramon. Okay, useful. That is some Vmon support. Brewe Ludramon and Scrap Claw. Yikes. All right. Final pack of 1.5, at least for this week. All right. Get out of there. Let's see if we got something good. We've got Evil Birdramon, Patamon, Skullmaramon, Cunemon. Garudamon, Candlemon, Gatomon, another Eden's Javelin, Clavis Angemon, Demi Vimon, okay. Wormmon, and Dino Beemon. Okay. No, this is alright, actually. If we get some Imperial support, uh, not bad. We can definitely Evo up into it at least and apply a little bit of pressure to Pete. God damn it. <laughs> that hurts. That hurts so much. It's a good card. It's the Altart, but god damn it. All right, we're gonna open up uh, the new Awakening before we jump into uh, the starter deck, because obviously the starter deck is guaranteed cards, um, and that's just not very exciting. All right, oh, no memory gauges. All right, that's cool. Uh, and I think we got something shiny in the back, so this is looking good. Uh, we've got Aquilamon, Dramojimon, Disaster Blaster, Karatimon, Senbon Dokan, Betel Gammamon. Spinomon, not good Demi Miramon. Hey, TK, and he's a memory tamer. Okay. That's actually really useful. Um, Marsmon, Willis, Black War Greymon. Oh. <laughs> okay. That's not bad out of a random pack. This dude is like 20 bucks now. I was not going to play Black War Greymon this format, but. Um, ooh, okay. Might just have to borrow from the sealed only pile over here. Let's hope uh, the next pack is as good of a hit, huh? Hopefully I didn't mangle anything there. Nope. <laughs> All right, we've got Examon, Skullmaramon, Armor Texture, potentially usable. Surfimon, um, it's 13K, it's blue. Okay. Master Tyranomon, Ikakimon, Kokuamon, Crimson Blaze. Interesting. Demi Devimon, Namekemon, Yuji, and... Yes! Yes! Oh, yes! I'm coming for you, Pete. I'm coming for you. Okay. Last pack magic. Last pack magic. Let's do this. Oh my god. I don't even care at this point. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That's a bomb. That's a bomb. Oh my god. Come on. Open up. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> this can be literally anything, I think, and I'm going to be happy. Uh, but, you know, it would be nice to get an armor. That would be good. Uh, okay, we've got Catch Mamemon, Captain Hookmon. That is very lame. Uh, Ultimate Brachiomon, Thundermon, Lightning Blade. Uh, good if we pull the armors. Angemon, actually not bad. Um, it's blue. Gets us recovery plus one late game. That's not bad. Terriermon, Submarimon. There's an armor. Kyokomon, Azulongmon, and Shivamon. Oh my god. Three supers out of three packs. This is definitely something Pete wants. I mean, this isn't bad either. Like, this is a different kind of mega we could play. Uh, it's cheap. It evos for three. I'm not about trashing the uh, top stack, but if I play... No, if I evolve another Digimon while this is on the field, it does unsuspend. So this is two swings. It's only 11k. That's not great, but like, oh my goodness. Shivamon. That's interesting. I can't use this. <laughs> I can't use this. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> we pulled the fighter mode. Oh my goodness. Do you guys see this? I mean, obviously this is a great pull too, but those bonus packs. Oh my goodness. I mean, like two of these I can't even use, but the pulls are just amazing. Like this is fantastic. This is cool too, but like, okay. I think we have an answer. Um, somewhat to Susanomon. <sighs> but it's a little tricky. We can't get the full use out of this guy just yet. So, yeah, we can work with this. We can work with this. 
Oh my God, I'm so excited. Yeah, we're gonna work with this, guys. Uh, oh, and obviously we gotta open this guy up here, so give me a second and we'll pull out the fun stuff as well. All right, guys, I mean, honestly, we don't really care <laughs> what's in here. This this might as well be a physical brick at this point, uh, but this, this is what we really want. We have got some promos. Uh, sadly, this is not the Memory Tamer tie, but we've got Davis, obviously uh, Gangbusters. We've got Ken, and these are all stuck together. Um, I guess Izzy's a Memory Tamer too. That might be a bit of a weird pick, but uh, yeah, I mean, these we can't really do anything with um, unless we want to splash this in for some red support, but obviously Davis is uh, our hero here, so <laughs> we're definitely throwing this guy in. Um, maybe when I get a bit more of the Imperial support, we'll throw Ken in as well. Uh, but, you know, no more getting choked to one, Pete. Uh, and with everything else I pulled over here, oh my goodness. Guys, this is going to be interesting. Let's jump right into the deck profile. I know exactly what I'm going to do this week. I think it's fair to say at this point that the deck is kind of an abomination. Despite the pulls being absolutely fire this week, they're not fire enough to fundamentally change the fact that this is still an Allforce Vidramon deck, now an inconsistent one, with some Imperial Dramon Spice dashed on top. Uh, or to put it another way, shit's awkward. But hey, you know that Imperial Dramon line is pretty spicy, and it's something that we can actually start to build around now. The Dragon Road, back when I first pulled it, was nothing more than an expensive flex. And I mean, you know, five memory to Digivolve up, uh, it's not great. But now it actually has a target to Digivolve for three on top of in the unfortunately one-off Dynamon. And of course, if I can get into the Dragon Mode first and have it stick, I can then evolve into Dragon Mode for just two which will let me bounce a 10k or less target and go for that delicious double swing, maybe with the ability to suspend something on Pete's side if I do have Dino Beam on in the stack. This isn't exactly going to be a great replacement for All Force, but I do think there is enough value here to justify the inclusion of that Imperial package, and it is definitely something to build towards long term. Now, we did get a really nice boon this week in the addition of the Memory Tamers. And in fact, I actually have access to three, which is kind of the sweet spot. Davis, of course, is particularly nice since it adds cards to hand for all force and meeting that eight card threshold. And of course, it can even fetch a green target now like Dino Beamon or Fighter Mode. Ken is a bit of a weird inclusion, but I think just having the extra memory tamer is nice. And there are some edge situations where I'll want to swing over Pete's stuff so getting the extra memory back is pretty nice, especially with access to Hammer Sparks and Blue Memory Boosts to further extend our plays. And Tifa here is pretty good because I can draw a card when Pete tries to swing over my guys, which is always nice. And that extra card, of course, will help to set up All Force for the big swing. And, you know, it does, again, help to mitigate the consistency issues that the deck is currently experiencing. Jamming Demon was a really nice pull as well, especially since it's basically a guaranteed check, and it obviously has fantastic synergy with the extra Demi Vmons that I've been pulling out of 1.5. And finally, I'm teching in a one-off bit of removal in the Road of Victory. This lets me bounce a level 5 or lower, so unfortunately it does miss out on Hercules Kabuterimon, but crucially, with a blue tamer in play, it will let me unsuspend one of my Digimon in addition to the bounce effect. So this will actually let me swing a little more freely and not necessarily fear the Electroshocker in retaliation, which has been a big issue for me throughout the course of the series. Now, we do have a long way to go here, especially if we're gonna start building towards the Imperialmon version of the deck, but I think this list is good enough to eke out a win especially if Pete does not pull any memory tamers this week. I think the advantage that those generate will just be enough to kind of carry me over the line. Uh, but if he sees some hybrids, well, that's another story. But hey, let's jump into the actual games here and see how this beautiful mess will actually fare. 
So going into game one, I actually feel pretty good at the outset because funny enough, I draw into all force, uh, I think almost within the first turn or two. But this also makes me essentially lose my sense and discipline uh, and ultimately make a dumb play that Pete pretty much always punishes me for. Um, Smelling blood in the water, I do swing into security fairly early on with the arrow V Dramon, and then seeing that Pete has a body on board, I evolve into all force to bounce it back to hand. Unfortunately, I'm only bouncing a Tentomon, which isn't exactly a superb value, and this will leave my all force suspended as we head into Pete's turn so that it can inevitably be hit with an Electro Shocker thus clearing my entire stack and forcing me to rebuild from scratch. With all of the time that Pete buys himself off of that Electro Shocker, he's able to go up into Hercules Kabuterimon and then effectively establish board control for the rest of the game. For my part, I realize that, yeah, I don't really have a lot of time left, and with the All Force still in hand, I focus on rebuilding my stack and then immediately come out swinging. This ends up being a mistake because I did not have eight cards in hand, which leads to my elf force crashing into a Hercules Kabuterimon in security and dying because it is only at 12k itself. So with my boss monster effectively dealt with twice, Pete has free reign at this point. I can't even hard drop anything because Hercules will just swing over it, pierce, and trash an extra security thanks to the Mega Kabuterimon Inheritable. So after trying to see some pieces and having Pete just trash my security into oblivion, I basically end up with a handful of champions and ultimates, which means that, well, I need to scoop. Game two kicks off with a little bit more aggression. I get an X Vmon established fairly early on and use that to fill my hand with the Demi Vmon inheritable while also threatening repeated chip damage. This might force Pete to come out of raising early, which could let me play a little bit of board control. Fingers crossed. Uh, and I also get another body on board because I really do need to chip Pete down to two security so that when I finally see an all force, I can use it to just clean things up. Pete actually takes the bait and promotes, evolving up into the Hercules Kabuterimon as I hoped he would. But this also forces him to pass the turn back over to me. Now I can swing in with Reckless Abandon, reducing the number of bodies that I have on board, and his security as well. But sadly, because of X Vmon's jamming, he's actually going to survive and thus provide a bit of fodder for the big bug. Pete obviously clears my X Vmon, clearing two security while he's at it, but now he's at a pretty low threshold himself, and I do have the Arrow Vdramon building up in the back. But you know, uh, with only three all force in deck, you're not always going to see them, so I'm forced to promote and swing with Aero Vdramon instead, or really just risk Pete coming away with the rest of the game. And without a memory tamer or a boost at this point, there is no way for me to evolve up into an all force anyways and keep the turn, so, you know, it just makes more sense to go for the chip damage. Recognizing that Pete actually only has the ability to kill one of my stacks anyways, I do hard drop the Vmon to choke him down to two and just try to limit how much damage he can really do to me on his turn. Pete says, nope, this is gonna be my big turn. So he clears my dragon and basically threatens to put me down into lethal range. But thankfully he doesn't quite have the pieces to clear my security and go for the hybrid because he is forced to tap the Izzy um, and gain the memory. But then of course that means that he cannot uh, go into the hybrid on top of Izzy and swing. So this is great, uh, but he's still able to effectively make me unable to win the next turn if he plays things right. But as things work out, Pete actually decides to just swing into security with his Tentomon and that reveals a Cordramon, which plays itself, draws me a couple of cards, and now leaves me with the bodies I need to immediately swing for game as soon as my turn comes up. Game three starts out pretty tame, all things considered. Pete starts building up a stack in the back, as do I, and not long after, Pete has a Kabuterimon blocker and a Floramon on field threatening to do quite a bit. I, sadly, do not see the All Force, which would make my life infinitely easier. So I actually have a little more to do than promote and evolve up into a Wingdramon blocker to basically try and stave off too much damage from Pete's smaller Digimon. Pete can't really do too much beyond evolving up into Lilymon, and he is able to fetch the Hercules Kabuterimon off of its effect. 
So now I know that I'm on a clock and with just one memory to work with going into my turn, uh, things are not looking good. That said, I do see a hammer spark in my hand and realizing that I can potentially swing the tempo of the game, I decide to go for a big play of my own. I spark up to two and then I digivolve into the most dangerous card in my deck. I'm gonna pay five okay. to digivolve my Wing Dramon into Imperial Dramon Fighter Mode. <laughs> Draw one for Digivolution. And on Digivolve, I can return one of your Digimon with 10,000 DP or less to your hand. So, Lilymon, go bye bye. Okay. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um. I got nothing for that. Draw for turn. So with Lilymon bounced and out of the way, fighter mode will basically be unchallenged for the next few turns or effectively the rest of the game. Pete attempts to rebuild his board, but at this point, the ability for me to swing twice or at least swing and unsuspend just becomes a bit too much for him to handle. I'm able to start slowly chipping away at Pete's security with fighter mode, forcing him into a situation where he has to start swinging with his smaller Digimon if he wants to keep up. But I can basically threaten a board wipe if he swings with everything, so this leaves him in a pretty awkward spot. Eventually, I snowball into too big of a field for him to handle, and with a couple of rookies on hand and fighter mode there, I'm able to chip him down to nothing and then swing with fighter mode for game. Okay, well, uh, ladies and gents, that's three in a row. But God, <laughs> Pete nearly had me this week. Uh, game one was an absolutely convincing win, and game two almost ended up the same way, but thanks to admittedly a very lucky Cordramon coming out of security, well, I was able to steal that one out from under him. A game three though, well, um, that's fighter mode for you. Holy shit, that's an amazing card. Uh, that is gonna put in some work. Uh, definitely makes me worry about Susanamon quite a bit less. So, you know, eat your heart out, Pete. But still, you know, um, obvious problems are obvious. The deck is currently an inconsistent mess and Pete's gonna be able to limit another card next week. Probably all force or maybe even Aero Vidramon. So uh, yeah, it's gonna make less and less sense as I try to figure out the lines uh, and get my 50 cards together. Odds are I'm not pulling a full Imperial Dramon line to compensate. So yeah, I'm a little bit worried that we're not gonna be going to a four win streak, unfortunately. But hey, we do have access to the second Jessmon starter deck next week, which will give me Davis. Hopefully, if I can see a Davis during the next couple of games, that might help to patch up some of the consistency issues, but uh, I still think we're in for a pretty bad time. I am tempted to maybe just smush together two of the Jessmon decks and just go Poggers and play Red and play a million Sistermons, uh, because, you know, I, I really have no idea what to do with my deck right now. It is very tempting to open up the Imperial Dramon starter deck, but, you know, with a three-game lead, uh, having just pulled Fighter Mode, it's, it's just not fair. That that deck is still just way too good. Um, it's goddamn tempting. I really wish I could open it, uh, but no, we can't do it just yet. So to sum everything up, uh, I don't know, <laughs> but we'll see. Uh, we'll see what the bonus packs, uh, the starter deck and other things have, you know, waiting for us. And hopefully we can figure out a sensible list of 50 cards plus Digitama. So hey, thanks for tuning in, ladies and gents. Uh, like the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you in the next one. Take it easy.